Why is poetry for the ears? Poetry is the first genre that most children hear. It's an oral tradition. And children love to listen to poetry. Poems touch the heart and the mind, but first, they must touch the ears. Children love the sounds of poetry. Even before they can read, children love wordplay, the rhythms and rhymes and repetition of poetry. They respond enthusiastically when it's recited or read to them. So when you read poetry aloud, consider how it will sound to your audience. Pay attention to the sounds the words make. When children listen to poems, they are building their listening skills. They learn to attend to the words they hear and to think about what those words mean together. And children love the emotion of poetry. Nursery rhymes are children's first experience with poetry and often touch on subjects that children are passionate and curious about. These clever rhymes have a musical language and often a jolt of drama. Three Blind Mice is a thrilling yet awful story. Little Bo Peep is a gentle tearjerker. Little Miss Muffet is just plain scary. And Humpty Dumpty illustrates a hard truth that not all broken things can be fixed. Poetry offers another way to communicate and develop a student's understanding of difficult concepts. Poetry is a method for developing a level of empathy that can be applied to real world situations. And then children love the surprise of poetry. Poets often resist saying a thing plainly if they can give it a twist. Dr. Seuss combines whimsy and depth, imagination and insight, and poems embrace the power of imagination and possibility. So children love to listen to poetry, but they often struggle to read poetry. Poetry is an intense form of language. Its compact structure employs as few words as possible. Its complicated syntax sometimes breaks the rules of grammar and punctuation. Its imaginative style uses similes and metaphors, personification, maybe figurative or sensory language, and even invented spellings. The difficult vocabulary stretches your student as he absorbs words he's not heard before. And its emotional force demands the listener respond to an idea, whether good or bad, but rarely neutral. So if poems are hard for children to read, why do we include them in our curriculum? Well, the variety of poems in our reading curriculum exposes your student to a small sampling of this intriguing genre of literature. It has a way of presenting a topic or idea in a new way that your student may not have thought about before. Your student can learn to appreciate a poet's craft and his point of view. It has a, a positive impact on the social and emotional learning of a student. So we try to keep poetry in balance by using it like seasoning rather than the main meal. And not every poem will become a favorite, but a love for poetry is contagious. I remember many poems that my mother recited to me as she washed and combed my long hair as a child. I caught the poetry bug. And even now, I'll hear a phrase or a piece of conversation and zap, I'll feel a poem coming on. So if you don't have a love for poetry, I challenge you to give poetry another try. Open a book of poems for children and read the strangest or silliest poems aloud to your student and you just might find yourselves howling with laughter as poem after poem tickles your ears. <laughs>